Hey guys, welcome back. Did you know that there's actually a whole two week gap between the ending of Halo 2 and Johnson finding Chief in the jungle at the start of Halo 3? Well, now you do, but what happens in this fortnight, you ask? Well, Chief does something quite major that could have literally changed the entire outcome of the war and possibly saved millions upon millions of lives. So today, we're going to cover that. So Halo 2 leaves us with that iconic cliffhanger, where Chief leaves Cortana behind on High Charity and boards the Forerunner Dreadnought, headed straight for Earth, leaving us on that bombshell of a finisher. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. The reason Chief boarded the Dreadnought was a last ditch effort to save Earth. Truth and his remaining cronies were on board and in the words of Mercy, were on their way to Earth to finish what we started. And this time, none of you will be left behind. Now, we know now that Truth was going to use the ship to open the portal to the Ark that was hidden below Africa and then go to the Ark to try and fire the entire Halo array and finish what we started. But when Bungie wrote Halo 2, this very likely wasn't the case. From what we know now, Bungie's vision of the Ark changed pretty drastically between Halo 2 and Halo 3. So at one point, Truth may have been able to kill everything in the galaxy from Earth. But by the time they finished writing Halo 3, the whole concept of the Ark had been changed. But anyways, that's just like some off-topic cool information. Let's get back to the point. Chief knew that Earth's defences couldn't hold up against Truth and Co. So instead of going after Tartarus, who had the Index, and was like this close to firing Delta Halo, he decided to board the key ship and go straight to Earth and try and save it. One last time. Now, the beginning of Halo 3 is actually quite deceptive. It makes you think that Chief simply just sat aboard the Dreadnought, waiting until it got to Earth, and then just bailed when he wanted to, in a typical Chief fashion. This, however, is not the case, not even remotely. In the two weeks that it took the ship to get from High Charity to Earth, Chief came this close to ending the entire war before the crew even got into Earth's atmosphere. After boarding the key ship, Chief didn't just sit around and wait, he wasted no time in trying to find the Prophet of Truth on board and kill him. Around the time the key ship passed Jupiter, Chief was contacted by IO Station, but ignored it because he was just a little bit busy. He'd managed to find a ghost and used it to blast through Covenant forces stationed on board, killing big groups of grunts, jackals, brutes, etc, before coming face to face with six hunters, which even for Chief proved to be too much. The hunters knocked Chief down and he was surrounded by grunts and jackals, before being interrogated by a brute chieftain, who wanted to know the location of the key of Ozanalan. Now, what the fuck is the key of Ozanalan? Well, it has a pretty funny backstory actually. So, during the war, Colonel James Ackerson was captured by the Covenant and interrogated, during which he told them that they needed this key in particular for the Halos to work properly, and that it was located in Cleveland, Ohio. Now, this key did not exist. It was something that him and his friend made out of tinfoil when they were kids to use in imaginary games. But it sent the Covenant on this massive wild goose chase, looking for this artifact that didn't exist, and ultimately actually led to the destruction of one of their ships and even a notable prophet on board. So a couple of kids' imaginary game actually managed to save quite a few lives and in turn wasted a shitload of the Covenant's time. That's some pretty good going. Anyways, back to the key ship. While Chief was being interrogated for the location of the key, he stuck the chieftain that was interrogating him with a plasma grenade in his area. <laughs> killing most of the surrounding forces and then continue to push through to find truth. After clearing hallways of grunts with the staple Halo 2 SMGs, Chief found a carbine and ultimately located truth in his holy chamber. As he lined the shot up to take truth out, in typical Halo 2 era fashion, a jackal fucking sniper took a shot at Chief and knocked him off the ledge and into the direct sightline of truth. Of course, it would be a jackal sniper. It would it could be nothing else. After killing the Jackal and taking shots at Truth, Truth hit him with a Prophet Beam, which is what I think it's called, while being shielded from Chief's carbine shots by the chair's shielding system. Unfortunately, Truth managed to retreat and his honor guards defended him as he did. 
and the Prophet got away, leaving Chief in the chamber surrounded by a shitload of brutes, all of whom he killed in a very, very convincing fashion. Although it's quite depressing that Chief was mere milliseconds away from completely destroying the Covenant by killing Truth, and a fucking jackal sniper of all things stopped him. Chief then made his way to the bridge on the Dreadnought, of which was now very, very close to Earth, like in Earth's low orbit close. On the bridge, he killed all but one of the crew, and after trying and failing to force one of the brutes to turn the ship around and away from the planet, he radioed down to Earth to warn them that the ship was on a direct collision course with the planet. Chief was then ordered to find a way off the ship and back down to Earth, which is where Halo Landfall fits into the timeline. So Neil Blomkamp's short Halo 3 movie-esque teaser follows two ODSTs who were sent to retrieve a laser designator for the UNSC to track Chief as he re-entered Earth's atmosphere. The way that Chief got back down to Earth was literally by jumping out of the Dreadnought. He took a big piece of metal from the ship to hold in front of him so the Earth's atmosphere wouldn't burn him up when he re-entered it, uh, and he also locked his armor as he got closer to the ground to try and sponge as much damage from the fall as possible, but he made it back down there, and the ODSTs from Landfall were successful in finding and using the laser designator to track Chief's drop location, the Tanzanian jungle in Africa. And then, the rest is history. Johnson and co find Chief, and then Halo 3 begins. Now, one pretty cool thing to note is that in a super early build of Halo 2, Bungie had actually partly built a Warthog and Banshee run for the end of the game. Now, it looked like the Warthog run was going to take place on High Charity, and would take you up to the conduit that Chief used in the actual game to board the Dreadnought, but instead of actually jumping into the conduit, you'd fly a Banshee, maybe into the hangar of the Keyship or something. Now, I spoke to Vengeful the Dam about this, who does videos on like old Halo betas and stuff. His channel is super interesting, the link is in the description, go check him out. Uh, and by the sounds of it, this mission will never be playable, unless for some weird reason 343 remake it or somebody gets a hold of the files and completely finishes it. But either way, it's pretty cool to look at what could have been and just dream about what Halo 2 could have ended like. So, I hope you enjoyed this little bit of extra lore, and maybe it gives some context to the big gap that you never knew existed between the two best video games in human history. And yes, that is an objective fact. I think it's pretty funny how Chief was like mere milliseconds from ending the war right there and then, and he could have saved millions of lives had there not been a jackal fucking sniper sat right behind him waiting to quickscope him. I want to give a big shout out to The Ardent Prayer, Chris G, Jack Cook, and Jack Madden for the extremely generous continued support on Patreon, along with everyone else who supports me on there. If you want to help support me further, then it's patreon.com slash hiddenxperia. The link is at the top of the description. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.